Hello, hello again, and welcome back to the Biosampler Summary. I'm John with the Lynch Lab at Duke University, and in this segment, we're going to be covering the operation of the Biosampler. We're going to cover the setup, the sampling process, as well as the cleanup. If you haven't seen the previous couple videos, the assembly part one, part two, video on software, maybe take a look at those before continuing. Let's take a look here. To begin setting up for a sampling run, let's first put thermal probe number one into the sample block. For me here, thermal probe one has green wire and it fits in the notch on the right side of the sample block when looking at the biosampler from the front. The aluminum box of the sample block should be half filled with water and or ethanol. We've added some ethanol so the stagnant water won't grow anything. Make sure not to overfill the box as sample tubes will be inserted into it and displace some of the volume. The thermal probe should be in the water, centered so that it will be between the two rows of sample tubes. Thermal probe 2, which is blue for me here, should rest on top of the radiator and can be either wedged between the radiator pipes or taped on the top. Next let's set up the sample tubing. As shown in the picture here, there are two sections of Y pinch tubing connected together with a branch of one Y connecting to the base of another. From left to right, we start with a small section approximately 15 centimeters of 8th inch outer diameter tubing with a male lure lock on one end and the other connected to the base of one Y pinch tube. The left branch of this first Y has a female lure lock barb which connects to a male lure lock and the tube to the bioreactor or source which is approximately 100 centimeters long. The other end of this section has a male lure lock to attach to a sampling probe on the bioreactor. The right branch of this first Y attaches to the base of the second Y. The left branch of the second Y has a female lure lock barb which connects to another male lure lock barb with a section of tubing that extends to the cleaning solution. This section of tubing is approximately 30 centimeters long. The right branch of the second Y has another male lure lock barb with a 0.2 micron sterile filter connected. Next to properly connect these fittings and insert the pinch tubing into the valves. The peristaltic pump should be fitted with two female quarter inch lure lock barbs. The pump section of the tubing is connected to the left inlet of the peristaltic pump. This tube is then inserted into the fluid sensor at the valves and then winds towards pinch valve number one, which is on the right side. The bioreactor or source branch goes in the front slot of valve number one and the branch going to the other sections is inserted into the back slot of valve number one. For the other two branches, the one with the sterile filter should be inserted into the back slot of valve number two and the cleaning solutions branch into the front slot of valve number two. From the right side of the peristaltic pump, another approximately 70 millimeter section of tubing is connected with a male lower lock barb which then feeds around the back of the instrument to another male lower lock barb with a blunt 18 gauge needle. This lure lock and needle is inserted into the needle holder and a zip tie is used to hold this in place in the needle holder. This tubing is also inserted into the fluid sensor on the gantry. All tubing except the tubing that's actually in the peristaltic pump is 8th inch outer diameter tubing. Next, 10 microcentrifuge tubes are inserted into the sample block lid with their lids opening outwards away from the sample block. The lid is then placed on top of the sample block with the thermal probe between the two rows of sample tubes and the notch on the right side accommodating the thermal probe wires. If it's not already mounted, attach the waste tube to the waste bracket with a zip tie. The top of this should be at about the same level as the sample tube openings. Make sure to put a flask or bottle under the waste tube to collect the waste fluids. Once everything's set up, plug the biosampler into a wall socket and switch it on. Open up your biosampler interface whether you're using a remote program or if it's plugged into a screen. First open cartesiantest.py. Run the script by clicking run at the top. The sample needle should be moved over each sample tube. If the needle looks like it's not over a tube, change the coordinates and try it again until all locations are defined properly. Remember the Y coordinate is the same for all locations, which is the distance from the central vertical location. So if you change the Y coordinate here, it's going to affect all sample tubes. 
x coordinate is the distance along the x axis from the home or waste tube location. Make sure you use control C to exit from this. You may need to click down at the bottom here to use control C. And if that doesn't work for you because it's busy moving, you can close out of that script, open up GPIO cleanup, and then on this script, hit stop, run this one, and that will turn everything off, making sure that your step motors are not energized. Next, open log temp.py. To calculate the max temp ADC value, divide the value you measured from your 3.3 volt reference, divided by the 5 volt reference, multiplied by 1023. For example, for this unit we measured the 3.3 volt reference was 3.309 volts. 5 volt was 5.05 volts. So 3.309 divided by 5.05 multiplied by 1023 equals 670 with this long decimal after. Going back to log temp.py, scroll down to the max temp ADC and change this value to the one that you just calculated. When you start the script, you should see both probes outputting temperatures that make sense. Approximately room temperature to start, maybe slightly cooler for the one in the sample block. And probe 1 should decrease and probe 2 should increase. Again, make sure you use control C to exit from the script. And if it doesn't work because your memory is busy, you can press stop, close out of the script. Your Peltier cooling element is still cooling. So we want to go to again to the GPIO cleanup script and run this to turn everything off. Next we want to open up Auto Home as well as the photo transistor test. First we want to run Auto Home just to make sure that our sample needle is located over the waste. Next make sure that the source tube is not connected to anything so that only air will move through it as we're going to turn on our pump. Run phototransistortest.py and write down an approximate average, average value reported for each fluid sensor. So right now, fluid sensor 1, the valve sensor, is reading pretty consistent 0 0.963. And the needle sensor, 0 0.96, just over 0 0.964. Write down an approximate average value for each fluid sensor. This is the baseline reading for each sensor with empty tubing. Next, use Control C to stop the script and put your source into some water. Start the script again, and as the fluids pump through, you can start to see the change in the fluid sensors. So it's going to hit valve 1 first, it's going up to 0 0.97 over 0 0.97, and then soon it's going to hit needle sensor, which also goes above 0 0.97. Perfect. So again, use control C to stop your script. So next, let's open up the biosampler master script here, and we are going to scroll down to the system variables section. And let's first change the max temp ADC value to the value that you just calculated and inserted into your log temp script. Once that's set, come down to your fluid value thresholds here. And these two values should straddle the baseline reading that you got with no fluid in your tubing. The high value should be just under the value that you got with water in your tubing. So for instance, for mine, I had 0.97 when there was water in the tubing, so I chose 0.968 to be just below that 0.97, and similarly your low value should be approximately the same distance below your baseline. Also just for this test, let's change our set point to 24 degrees Celsius, 
Then scrolling up line 521 here, we're going to comment this out. So if you hit Alt 3, that will comment that one out just to save us a little time here. Line 465, you're going to comment this one back in. So Alt 4 will comment that back in. And then one more here. Line 324 here, we're going to comment that back in as well. So Alt 4. So now when we run our script, it's going to first ask us to input a process number. I'm just going to put in test for now. The sample interval, I'm going to put in zero. And now I already have some log files named test, so I need to, it asks if I want to overwrite them. I'm putting in Y, enter to start up. It shouldn't ask you to do that, assuming you're putting in a unique process number. Now normally it will cool the sample block down to the set point before taking the sample, but because we set our set point high, it should start right up. It initially is now clearing the sample tube to begin. It's then going to pull a purge sample into the tubing. It will then clear that purge sample to waste. Then for the actual sampling, it's going to pull a sample into the tube. It will use a short clear to move that sample up towards the needle. Then the sample dispensing needle will move to its sample location. At that time, the fluid sensor by the valves should not see fluid in the tubing, but there should be fluid in the tubing by the other fluid sensor up on the gantry. Now once the needle moves to the sample location, it's going to dispense the sample and it's going to output these values. So I'm going to stop here and hit Control c to exit the script. And let's take a look here. So the first sensor at the valves is outputting these values because it did not see fluid. So it is below that 0 0.97. It's also within the bounds that we set for it. The second fluid sensor is above that 0 0.97. And now the way this script is working, it is appending to that hits one. If sensor one values are within the range, and it's appending to hits two if they are outside of the range. So because it did not see fluid at sensor one, and it did see fluid at sensor two, it's now going to tell us it's a successful sample. So if you need to, this is also a good time to tune your sample size. So if you go back down to the system variables, and if you noticed your sample there took too much, you can decrease your sample size here, or if it was too little for you, you can increase that and try it a couple times, tune it for the exact size that you want. This is also a good time to note, pump tubing needs to be broken in, so when you have a new fresh tube with new tubing, you really just want to set that up to run for a couple hours. So in order to do that, you should go to your pump test here and put your source tubing into some water. You really just want it in the waste beaker, whatever you have your waste tubing going to. And then you want to set up your slow pump one here for a couple hours. So 3600 seconds would be one hour, 7200 would be two hours. Just run your pump for a couple hours to break in that tubing. So once you have successfully set your bounds for your fluid sensors, don't forget to change your set point back to a des desired set point temperature. We use 4 Celsius. Also come up and comment back in clean air clean, so that is running. Don't forget to comment out line 465, it won't detract anything, but I don't need to see the length of those two lists anymore. That was just for calibration purposes. Also, same for line 324. I've commented that back out. You can save and exit that. Then I just want to show you if you go into your sample logs folder here, your sample logs will have been recorded. And if you go into a sample log, 
it's going to show you the different times. So sample start time, that's the beginning of your sampling cycle. Sampling time is the actual time that your sample was taken. Sample end time would be the end of the sampling cycle. I exited out before the sample completed. There should be three temperatures here for the temperatures at each of those time points. It will also tell you if it was successful based on the recognition from those two fluid sensors. Now one more thing here. If we go back to our main biosampler folder, the cleaning cycle, you want to run this at the end of a process run, and this one will just give you directions for when you start it up. It will say initiate a cleaning cycle, put both inlet tubes, so that's the cleaning solution tube and the source tube in cleaning solution, and press enter. Once you press enter, it will start up and it will just pump that cleaning solution through your tubing. Once that is halfway done, it will tell you to take them out of the cleaning solution and then it will, when you press enter there, it's just going to pump air through the tubing to clear your tubing. So thank you one more time here for joining me to learn about the biosampler. I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I have. And if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. I hope somebody finds this useful. I hope you build this. And if anyone does build this, please let me know. I would love to hear about it. Bye for now. Hey again. I just wanted to take a quick second here to acknowledge the support we received for this project from DMC Biotechnologies, as well as the guidance from Dr. Michael Lynch. Thanks for helping make it happen.